prohibited from putting in proposed orders. If, if you ever receive a motion that the opposition is making and the attorney is putting in a proposed order, right there is a rule violation, at least in the federal courts. I'm not sure about the state courts, but I think it applies to states as well. But in the federal courts, there is a rule violation. The rules say very specifically that an attorney may not submit an order. Okay? The reason why? Well, I think it's because as an individual, you're in your sovereign capacity. You speak for yourself. The actual order is a little too personal, I guess. I really don't know, but that's my suspicion. It's just that uh, the attorney is actually an agent. He's a representative. In theory, the agent's supposed to know as much as the principal. But in actual fact, um, um, he has no business influencing the court in that way. Now, once a, a, the court makes a decision, often the court will instruct the winning side to type up the order. Okay? Now, if that ever happens to you, read that order carefully because it may be that when he does type it up, he throws in an, an item or two. Okay? In which case, you should object to that order. And a proper judge would say, yeah, that wasn't in my original order. and Scratch that part. And judges get very informal, by the way, in how they do things. They, when they modify the order, they just scratch it out with free hand and write in what they want. Oh. Okay, well, anyhow, that's just kind of a, a brief overview. Let's go into an action at law. This is kind of an example. Okay? The first thing is I want to cover the elements. Now, this is going to get a little complicated here. So, uh, you've got to pay attention. If you fall asleep, you'll miss something. Okay. Basically, here's how the system works. You start off with, well, actually, this isn't how the system works. I, I want to apprise you. We're not, I'm not going to really go into this. But I want to apprise you of uh, another paper here that precedes all of this. It's called a notice and demand. You see, uh, right here, notice and demand. When somebody, when somebody is stepping on your toe, frankly, you don't know if he's doing it on purpose or if it was an accident. Now, it's the nature of our legal system that if it's an accident, there's no responsibility. You know, a perfect example of this is, let's say you're driving down the road, you're doing 25 miles an hour in a 35-mile zone. Okay, you're 10 miles under the speed limit and out from a park from between some parked cars a child runs out and you can't stop and you strike and kill the child in our system of law you are not held responsible for that that was an accident beyond your control now let me tell you something that isn't how it works in all systems in fact I read of a case one time where this man of course he was an American in Saudi Arabia okay that might have had something to do with it <coughs> He was he's subject to Islamic law in Saudi Arabia. And what he did, there was a curve where the road curved. And off to one side of the curve, there was a parking lot. And uh, he got a little volume there. So he parked his car in the parking lot and went into the building. A uh, Saudi Arabian came zooming around the curve, was going too fast, went off the curb, over the parking lot, hit the car, and I think he was killed. I'm not sure. It was a bad accident. So they charged the owner of the parked car, made him responsible for this, because they said that he had free will. And he had decided to park there, and had he not parked there, this wouldn't happen. Okay? And under Islamic law, he was responsible for the death of this person. Okay? Or the injuries, anyway. So you see, this, is, uh, this concept that we have of not being held responsible when it's a genuine accident is rather unique to the uh, English world, the English-speaking world. Uh, <clears throat> but that is actually unique to the Christian world. Because uh, now in Mexico, my understanding is, is that uh, you have an accident, automatically everybody's arrested. All the witnesses are arrested. Everybody's arrested. Throw them all in jail. We'll sort it out later. Okay? 
There's no concept. The exception to that is, is if you're holding Mexican insurance. Okay? The Mexican insurance companies have, have made arrangements with the government, apparently. So, um, in, in this country, you are not held responsible for something that was purely accidental. So, if somebody is stepping on your toe, you don't know if it's an accident or not. So, you got to find out. So, what you do is you send this person who's standing on your toe a notice and demand. You say, hey, you're stepping on my toe. If he turns back and he says, yeah, what of it? Well, now you have a case. Okay? Now you've established that you gave him the notice and he continues to do it. So, there are eight things that you need to do in a notice and demand. First of all, you have to tell him what he's doing. Because maybe he doesn't know. Okay? And then you, you tell him what the injury is that's happening to you. Okay? It might be your loss of substantive rights. Uh, <clears throat> but somehow you're being injured by his actions. Or you're being injured by his lack of action. Could work that way too. Okay? He has a duty to not cause you an injury. Okay, so you you bring out the moral, public, and private laws that require him to not cause you the injury. So I think is it um, one of the Title Forty Two sections? I forget which section it is that uh, holds a person responsible for failure to acting. Yeah, I'm not sure which one it is, but it's somewhere in there. It might be eighty six, nineteen eighty six, or something. But whatever it is. I think it's one of those sections. It's either Title 18 or Title 42. <clears throat> 241, 242 for Title 18 and 1983, 85, and 1986 for the uh, Title 42. But basically, you cite the, the moral, public, and private measurements of the damages. Now, a good way to, to figure out what the damages are is to look at the fines that are charged. You know, if, it, if there may be a criminal, uh, a penal code law or something like that, you look at that and that'll give you a good idea of what's customary to charge a person for committing that offense. Only you're not in criminal law here, you're in common law. You understand there's three, three basic laws that we operate here is, is uh, common law, civil law, which is the statutes, <coughs> and... Uh, Penal, penal law, which is also statutes or codes. But, um, and then, of course, there's other systems like there's admiralty law and maritime law and so on. But basically, you, you let him know that, that this is the cost of the damages. Damages means what's owed for the injury. That's item five. I skipped four, which is... Um, you let him know he's breaching his duty that you named in item three. And then you demand that he get off your toe. Okay, that's number six. You demand that he in good faith do his duty, pay you the damages, and to do so within a reasonable number of days, usually 60 days for government and 30 days for everyone else. But you, you make that demand. And this notice and demand could go to the, uh, could go to the uh, risk, management, <coughs> risk management of a city or it could go to the Court of Claims of, for the federal government. That's where you send your, your notice and demand. <clears throat> and um, you also, in number seven, you point out that if he does not do what you demand within the allotted time, then you'll take lawful action, either in personam or in rem, in other words, either him personally or against his property, to defend yourself against him. Now, this is an important point. You do not say to anybody, and you especially do not say it to public officials or judges, you do not say, do this or I'll sue you. Okay? Because that's a threat. Never threaten anybody. The concept is, if you're going to do something, do it. But don't threaten. Because if you threaten, that becomes, uh, what's it called? Assault. No, not assault. Actual. No. No. 
No. You're saying. What does a person say when? Yeah, it is a threat. But what do you? What do they call it now? When you when you say to a person, "Pay me, or I'll kidnap you." Extortion. Blackmail, extortion. There you go. You see that when you threaten a person, you're telling the person to do something or else. That's extortion. If you're going to punch somebody, punch them. Don't don't say I'm going to punch you if you don't do something. You see, right? So. Uh, but what you can say, what you're entitled to say, is that if you don't quit doing what you're doing, I'm going to defend myself. Because that is a natural, universal right. Everybody has a right to defend himself against any unreasonable, unlawful attack. And so you treat this like he's attacking you. You never say to the person, I'll sue you if you don't quit attacking me. Never. You always say, you either quit attacking, attacking me or else I'm going to start defending myself. That's acceptable. Here, in item 7, you say, if he does not do as demanded within the allotted time, then by tacit procuration, assumed power of attorney, you will determine for him the facts, his duties, and the damages he owes you. Tacit means that by the actions of the parties, you draw your conclusions as to what your relationship is. And what is that relationship? Well, procuration means you're going to be his attorney, his agent. So you will determine for him exactly what it is he was doing. You will become his representative. You'll, you know the old rule for courts. If you fail to object, it means you agree. You put in there, in this notice, that if he fails to, to respond to this thing, then you'll be his attorney. You'll make the determination for him. I love it when they throw these things away. Okay? <laughs> what do you think the IRS does to people all the time? They send notices and a lot of people ignore them. Right? Don't know how to answer them. They let the time go by. They go through the administrative process, get no luck there. They go to the court and the judge looks at it and everything is settled. Everything's admitted. All he does is apply the power of the court to what is already established. If you fail to object during the administrative process, then the court's going to look at that and say, well, look, you agreed this was so, even if it was by your lack of action, you agreed. And so you end up with uh, the IRS orders being enforced in the courts. So never ignore notice. <clears throat> never ignore anything that comes your way. You see the army... You're sitting in your castle, you look out the window and you see the approaching army, you go out and meet it. You don't wait until they arrive at the door. Okay? Okay, then you, the finally, the last one is, if, if he does not perform as demanded, you will take lawful action in personam and, and in rem to defend against him and all persons acting in concert with him who cause or attempt to cause said injuries to secure your substantive rights and to redeem the damages owed to you. So that's your constructive notice. So that precedes everything. Now, if somebody does something to you, sues you in court, you don't have to send them the demand anymore. Okay? Because they've already started the attack. Your answer is to counterattack. You do not give them a notice and give them more time. Okay? You don't allow them to build the strength up. <clears throat> so... You go ahead and you put together your counterattack. It's called a counterclaim, okay, if somebody's attacking you. It's an old rule in football. Best defense is a good offense, and it applies to court, too. All right, <clears throat> so that's the, that's the first step. Not yet. I'm going to put this on the Internet in a few days, a couple of days or so. Yeah, <clears throat> I just finished putting it, some of this stuff together last night. Yeah, this will be on the internet. <clears throat> Look in the procedure section and it'll be there. Now you're going to do a lawsuit. <clears throat> Bill, I've got a question. Sure. If we're all sovereigns and we're foreign to the uh, United States and the system, um, I've been, I've, I went to one of the... I went to a seminar in, about letters of rogatory. Do you have any comments about letter that? rogatories? Yeah. yeah. Uh, letter rogatory. All that is is a letter from a credible source, such as a court, another court, a foreign court, 
which the Lord